What's up guys? Welcome back to the Montyverse. Today, we're going to be checking out the brand new Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania trailer. One of my most anticipated movies of the year. Nikki, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's go. Ant-Man, the Wasp, Cassie, Kang. I'm so excited. Let's get into it. Starting the trailer right about now. You're an interesting man. Scott Lang. You're an Avenger. This pulsating score, yeah, like, daughter. it's really intense so far. Yeah. But you've lost a Whoa. long time. Like me. She got arrested too? We can help each other with that. Yeah. Who are you? I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want. What's that? Time. Yes! Let's go, baby! I can rewrite existence and shatter timelines. You cannot trust him. I don't care who this guy is. Oh, Mordor! Mordor! So much. Mordor. He can give us a second chance. Let me make this easy for you. <laughs> you will bring me what I need. Or everything you call a life will end. Not want her to watch this. We had a deal. Oh. Rock again. You thought you could win. <laughs> I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. I'm sorry, Cassie. Oh my god! Whoa! That that was crazy. That's insane. That that was very intense. Like so good. What what I really like about it is I think the first trailer kind of took you a bit step by step of like, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what everyone's doing. Like, here's a bit of the world. This like had like the tone, the vibe and like a little bit more of the plot and like the character motivations. But like and like it was a bit simpler, but was also like so, like in so intense at the same time. Yeah, it's it's so I have chills. I have goosebumps. Like, yeah, that was like Jonathan Majors. Oh, yeah. It's, terrifying as Kang in this trailer. Yeah. We didn't really get much of him in that first trailer. I mean, we've seen him as he who remains in Loki. Yeah. But this is Kang, baby. This is full on Kang the Conqueror. I'm going, I'm here. This is what I'm here to do. And did not disappoint at no. all. He's absolutely terrifying. Yeah. What I really love is that this movie, like some people were complaining that the first trailer didn't really feel like an Ant-Man movie, but I think... It did, and I think what this trailer really solidifies is that the core to me of all the Ant-Man movies is Scott and his relationship to the people around him. Scott, but mainly his relationship to Cassie. Yeah. And this hammers that in 100%. Like, he is only doing this because to help Cassie, because Kane kidnaps Cassie, and he wants the time back that he lost with his daughter. He lost five years of time with his daughter, and he's not an absentee father. He's a good father, mm -hmm. and that bothers him. Right. So... For all of Scott's flaws, there's the one thing that is not a flaw is is his parenting abilities because he's not a bad parent. He's a very loving father. And that's something I love about the Ant-Man movies. They have a heart. And even though this movie is so grand in scale, we're in the quantum realm, it really looks like it's revving up the story of the multiverse saga. It's our first introduction to the the king or a or one of the main kings in the what will be the King Dynasty build up to King Dynasty, which is the tagline of this movie that I absolutely love. Uh, we're about to enter a new dynasty. Great tagline. Oh, so good. Um, 
another thing I wanted to talk to you about is, I don't know if you saw it, because I was kind of freaking out. I, I saw that, but I, I couldn't hear what you were saying. It was MODOK. So, MODOK <gasps> is a villain uh, from the Marvel comics, and there was a rumor going around that in this movie he was going to be played by a returning Corey Stoll. And we get two shots of him. We get one shot at the end of the trailer where he's in this gold armor, but I caught it out of the corner of mine. A reason why you probably didn't see it is because you're on the other side of the monitor. I is, I sure. was was Modok like right behind Cassie? Or? Um, yeah. When the right here, I think it is right when he's walking Scott and Cassie out. Um, he's behind them mm -hmm. and he has the mask open, and you could very clearly see for a split. Look, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Corey Stahl. You see right there. Okay, I saw like the two people in front of him, and I wasn't sure what. Yeah, it look. It kind of looks like George Lopez from Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <laughs> uh, I love that comparison. But because this is just this is a little funny looking, but I'm sure it's not the final look. But it looks so comic book accurate, and this and this is definitely a different version of Modok from the comics. But you know, the, the Modok is not uh, has, the the, Mo, the Modok Supreme exists now, so maybe this is a spin on Modok Supreme. Uh, yeah, but that's pretty cool, right? Like, that's a good catch that I saw. It is. At the same time, it's... It's so, so goofy looking. Yes. I was going to say how silly it is. But, <laughs> but like, that's MODOK. But that's what oh, MODOK yeah, yeah. looks like. Well, that's know? what I figured. Like, when you said MODOK, I was just like, I definitely didn't see that. But yeah. that that's a really a good Mechanized catch. organism designed only for killing. MODOK. That's, that's a good memory. Yeah, you know, um... And then we have Cassie, obviously. Cassie is looks to be a part of the action in this one. Yeah, which she uh, was in the first one, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, I mean, last trailer we talked a little bit how the suit is purple. And mm -hmm. it's definitely rem more reminiscent of her Stinger suit in the comics than her Stature suit. Stinger is the identity she takes later on in her career. Stature being the first identity. But that purple is pretty synonymous. And it's almost identical in appearance to her Stinger look, her Stinger outfit in the comics. That's pretty cool. Another thing I liked, which has nothing to do with the comics, but I love it because it's going to be such a meme when this movie comes out, is did you see, like, the army of Ant-Men? Yes. That were, like, ants? They were, like... Yeah. I think I did. I think I was, like, a little more distracted when Scott was literally unraveling. Yeah. Is that the... Okay. Yeah, like, look, these are all Ant-Men. Okay. Like, you see them running with him. Like, you'll it, like there's a, there's a portion of the trailer where he's running with, like, an army of, like, see, look. Oh, God. Like, they're all Ant-Man over there. That just gives me flashbacks to Ralph Breaks the Internet. But it, but this is considerably but less creepy. Why it's so funny? Because they're like ants. So instead of this one, he has, instead of an army of ants helping him. An it's army like, of him! <laughs> it's like, oh, where are you going to get ants in the quantum realm? He's going to get Ant-Man. He's going to be an army of Ant-Man. And I'm so excited for it. Let's go, baby. That's such a silly idea. That I love. I don't know why I love it so much. I was gonna say I love that you love it as much as I you saw do. it, and I'm like, and I was immediately all in. I'm like, yes, the Ant Man has become the Ant. <laughs> Justice for Antony. That was one of the hardest hitting deaths in the MCU. All right, that, Anthony. That is actually true. That was rough. That one hit me rough. So he's gonna get justice for Antony by becoming an Ant, <laughs> and I'm here for it 100. percent now, one thing that's there, we got a little Janet in this trailer because I yeah. feel like Janet's definitely going to help move the plot of this movie. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of hope. I mean, not not the, I was gonna the say, personification I, of hope, but I, the character. I was going to say like everything we saw of her is like it felt just super reminiscent of the first trailer. Where, yeah, like she already and she already wasn't that big in the first trailer. Yeah, I, I really think Scott has to be a main focus. I think I think there's going to be really I think they're going to do a Star Wars an Empire Strikes Back type of thing where there's two main plots. Right, cuz like they're clearly showing that Hope is like with her parents yeah. at some point away from Cassie and Scott. So maybe yeah. they're doing their own thing cuz Jan obviously has the familiarity with everything exactly. and is guiding them. So I, I think I'm on the same page as you with yeah, that. Yeah, you're 100% on the same page. That's exactly what I was thinking. You nailed it. Um I think we're going to get two fa two congruent two parallel family storylines we're gonna get scott and cassie which i really am excited right. for because you want to talk about making up for lost time how about janet hello except bingo you like you literally just took the words out of my mouth because in i was gonna say the, the parallel to that is janet she lost all decades. of like decades with her husband and her daughter and hope hope has all of that baggage that we know from the first movie about about her mother not being there really damaged the relationship between her and Hank, uh, right. in the movies, 
you know, and they came together. Now seeing them come together with Janet, that's something that we need, that we really didn't get a lot of in Ant-Man and the Wasp because Janet was only in the movie for like five minutes, yeah. if that much. So I really want to see them focus on those. As long as we get that and it comes together in this big, really cool fight that it looks like it's going to happen. Right. And that's I'm what, at the end. And that's what's interesting is like, obviously this is a greater scale movie and like everything's crazy. King has the, the insane unlimited power he has. At the same time, like he was just personally being the shit out of Scott. Yeah. And that, and like, that got to me more than I thought it would have. That was terrifying. Like, first of all, Jonathan Majors is intimidating. He's an intimidating looking dude. He's, uh, especially in that Creed trailer, that Creed 3 trailer, he is jacked. And, and to see King and all of his power, and we haven't even seen anything yet. Because yeah. we don't even know what is the circumstances of this movie. I doubt Scott by himself was able to damage King's armor that much, or, or King's clothing. Yeah, yeah. So I would love to see just the kind of damage that King wreaks before to get him to that point of anger. And also I think the powerful line of, I don't have to win, but we both have to, we just both have to lose like that. That's intense. And like, I, ho I hope they do something like interesting with that. It's almost like they're trying to like imply that Scott dies, but you're not going to fool me. This right. is a red herring. I, I just hope it's something like, I just hope it's a really good payoff, whatever it is. Yeah. And I think, there's a lot of cool, like, we could dissect this whole trailer line by line because there's so many important lines in this trailer. Like, Janet giving the voiceover of King and then King talking to Scott. Yeah. She, she implies that King can erase timelines. And yeah. He can change existence. And so Janet knows just how powerful King is. I want to know how King got trapped in the quantum realm. Is he trapped? Yeah. Or is he just building a base there? Like, why does he need Scott? These are all, like, this trailer showed us a lot and we know... We know the broad strokes. We don't know yeah. any of the crazy plot driving details of this movie. Right. But that's what, like I said earlier, I think that was the nice thing about this trailer is it gave us a little more than the last one in terms of we didn't really know exactly what Kane's motivation was. And like we have, we don't know the specifics, but like you could just feel it. Like again, yeah. just like the vibe that they're giving and just the the intensity of all of it like you you know whatever it is like the stakes are big yeah it's it, it feels big this is the usually the ant-man movies are small they're palate cleansers people always used to call them the palate cleansers of the mcu an ant-man movie would always come out after a, a mcu changing event like yeah, age like, of ultron or and Civil, infinity war <laughs> yeah or in or infinity war <laughs> ant-man and the wasp was the ultimate palate cleanser it was a nice Lemon sorbet until the of the post, MCU. Until the post credit. Yeah, until the the extremely like man, for anybody with <laughs> claustrophobia or anything, man, that that post credits was dark. Um but then this movie is like, no, Ant Man's the star of the show now. Ant Man's yeah. Ant Man's driving the plot forward. Mm -hmm. The Ant Man family is literally driving the plot of the multiverse saga forward. And I think without your Tony Starks and without your Captain Americas, you it, Hank feels like the guy and, and the Ant-Man family feels like the family to kind of drive that scientific plot forward. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm so excited. I could really scrub through this thing and, and for any minute details, but I'm very impressed with myself for all the things that I did catch. Um, I love the, just, just the way they were able to incorporate King's blue face Mm -hmm. into jonathan majors with that like self-removing force field yeah that it becomes a helmet and doesn't become a helmet and it gives him the silhouette of his comic book counterpart i love that so much like stupid little things like that i love right um he looks so good uh yeah i'm ex i'm excited i'm really excited Do, are there any other things that you picked up on that you wanted to talk about N nothing offhand i mean like you got a lot more details than i did like I think I was just, like, I was very enthralled, like I said, with kind of just the delivery, like, just, I was just, for lack of saying che cheesy, I was kind of, s like, soaked into, like, his words, like. Yeah. Because, like, a lot of that was deep, and that's what I think is exciting, is, like, yeah, it looks intense and action-packed, but it's gonna have a lot of emotional de depth to it at the same time. Absolutely. I mean, we even have that point in the beginning where we see Cassie getting arrested. Yeah. You know, so that, I think that triggers Scott's feelings of, well, all the time I missed, like what happened to my daughter, like what happened to my little girl. Yeah. Um, oh my god! When she goes to hug him in the flashback. 
Oh man, this is gonna be a tearjerker, folks. Back when she had her first actress. Yes, two <laughs> actresses ago. Back when she, she hugged him so hard, she changed actresses <laughs> twice. And that's the plot of this movie. We have to get the old actresses back. Let's get Abby. At, uh, it's other... gonna be like No Way Home. The, the other two actresses are gonna come flying in on ants. They're gonna be like, we're here. I mean, that would actually be pretty dope. <laughs> that would be hilarious. But I think that's the, gonna do it for us. If you like the video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe with the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content because we have tons of cool videos coming out just like this one. Nikki, where can the people find you? You can find me at Twitter, at EggLordNikki. And you guys can find me here at the Montyverse on all of the socials at the Montyverse. And until next time, guys, stay versed.